personal finance PowerPoint presentation, saving for retirement overview. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, Saving for Retirement, The Quest for Success, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Denise Appleby, updated February 3rd, 2022. As we think about the specific goal of retirement, we want to keep in mind the tools that we've dived into in more detail in prior sections prior presentations such as our overall investment strategies using stocks bonds mutual funds for example now we're going to hone those tools down to the specific goal and objective that pretty much every individual has that being saving for retirement so saving for retirement the quest for success the main goal of a successful retirement plan is to ensure you will have sufficient financial resources to maintain or improve your lifestyle during your retirement years. So whenever we're putting together a strategy, we want to know in specific terms what our goal is. We're looking to set when our retirement age will be. What's that point in time? We want to be in a situation where we can maintain our lifestyle for the rest of our life. What will the duration you know, of the life be and how much money will we need in order to do that? That's gonna be the objective. So if you want to travel and make more purchases in retirement, you will have to save more. So clearly, if we are imagining that we're gonna spend our retirement cruising around the world and, and spending possibly more money than we are at the point in time that we are working, that will of course need that we need more savings to do so. How much you will need to save will depend on how you want to spend your retirement. According to some financial planning experts, you will need to save enough so that your retirement income is in the range of 70% to 80% of your pre-retirement income. Now, this of course is an average kind of heuristic type of range that in retirement you might not need as much as you would uh, during uh, previous years or an, in your working years, possibly because you have more expenses at that point in time, paying down things like the mortgage and for kids and tuition and that, this kind of thing. But at the same time, these are just general heuristics and you want to get an idea or a feel for what you think personally you might need in retirement as opposed to what you need during your working years so that you have the goal that you can shoot for. So you will need a higher percentage of, of you plan to improve your standard of living. So clearly, if you expect to have a standard of living that's higher, you're cruising around the world, then you're going to need more money. So if you have more expenses in retirement than before retirement, your retirement income may have to be more than your pre-retirement income. According to James B. Twinning, CFP, founder of CEO Financial Plan Incorporated, Bellingham, Washington, some financial advisors believe that a retirement income of 70% to 80% of pre-retirement income is sufficient. While that may be true for some people, many will find that they are not happy with that level of income. Consider that although it is easy to increase spending, it is quite another to reduce it. So clearly, it, you know, once we start getting used to having more time and spending money during that time, it's easier to spend more money than, of course, it is to uh, tighten the belt and restrict the spending. Retirees who take a 20% to 30% cut in pay will feel it in a reduced lifestyle. Building up your savings requires careful planning, which includes assessing your current assets, the number of years left until you retire, and how much you'll be able to save during your pre-retirement years. 
So we've got to think about what's the, the time horizon, what's our goal, how much are we going to need at that end result, what are the tools that we're going to use to get from here to there. So in this article, we will list some of the steps to take uh, when implementing your retirement program. Determine what you need. One popular approach to retirement planning starts with determining how much you'll need to finance your retirement years. So we might start off our plan by saying, this is the point in time that I'm going to retire. How much money do I need at that point in time? That would be nice if we can determine that because then we can think about how much we need to save on a per year basis or per paycheck basis or whatever and, and take into consideration the possible growth we will have over hopefully a fairly long term depending on when we start saving for retirement in order to achieve the objective to achieve the goal. This is usually based on a projected cost of living increase. So realize that when you are calculating how much you will need in retirement, it's not the same as how much you would need today if retired, because we would expect there's gonna be some kind of inflation that is gonna happen. Your money's not gonna go quite as far at that time. So the number of years you're likely to spend in retirement, so how long are you gonna live? That's gonna be a difficult kind of thing to, to factor in, but you can use standard actuarial tables and whatnot and the lifestyle you plan to lead during retirement. Are you going around the world? Are you gonna be doing pretty much the same spending habits as you have now? Put projecting on amount isn't an exact science. The years you spend in retirement may be more or less than your, than your project. And the same may go for cost of living increases. So obviously these are estimates. However, a comprehensive outlook and some thought will help to provide realistic projections. Here are some factors to consider. So we don't know what's gonna happen into the, into the future, it's all projections, but we need some kind of projection, otherwise we have nothing to aim at. We're, not, we're certainly gonna miss the target if we at least, if we don't even try to focus in on anything, right? So you're projected everyday living expenses. So what are we gonna need for the, for the standard costs of living, food, you know, shelter and so forth. Your life expectancy, so how long are you planning to live? You can might get actuarial tables like life insurance tables, how long do people typically live and so on from the point of retirement till or death. So your projected costs, your resources other than your retirement savings that can cover unplanned expenses such as resources may include long-term care insurance, annuity products and health insurance. So your pro uh, property, if you own your home or have an, no outstanding mortgage balance or will own your home by the time you retire, you have the option of selling it or obtaining income through a reverse mortgage. So other resources that you might not consider as an income flow might be things such as the home, the home being a large uh, asset and obviously when you retire, you might not need the, the large home because people might not be living in it that are living there during the working years. So you could sell it by, by a smaller home or rent or something like that, or possibly have a reverse mortgage, which could dip into some of the spending cash at that time. Uh, your intended lifestyle during retirement, including whether you plan to lead a quiet retirement or engage in activities like traveling around the world that may be expensive. Take stock of what you have. If you are not a, finan not a financial planning expert or don't have the time uh, necessary to implement and manage a retirement program, you may need the help of a competent financial planner. So you could seek help with your retirement plans and your investment plans and so on and so forth. So if you do seek professional guidance, your planner will assess your current financial status in order to design a realistic and successful retirement program. You will need to provide detailed information about your financial affairs. Documents your financial planner may need generally include copies of your most recent account statements, including regular savings, checking, retirement savings, annuity products, credit cards, and other debts, as well as the following. So if we're trying to put our information together in terms of our current financial states and then project into the future, the documentation that we might be needing to do so would be their current assets, financial assets we have, as well as the debts that we might have, including the mortgage and the credit card debts. That would be a good starting point for us. We can imagine putting those together in terms of basically personal financial statements, a balance sheet and an income statement. Software can help us to do that. 
software like accounting software, if you're using something like a QuickBooks that can be used for personal financial data as well. But you can also use software that pulls in the financial data, something like a personal capital. Uh, they can pull in the, in the at least the financial data uh, as well, which can help with some of this planning too. So a copy of amortization schedules or summaries of any mortgages. So if you have the mortgage, the amortization schedule can help to determine how long the mortgage is outstanding for and the yearly costs of the mortgage and so on and so forth. Copies of your tax returns for the last few years, the because it's an income tax return, it can give you a general idea of kind of your income reported on a tax basis. A copy of your most recent pay stub, that can clearly give you an idea of, of what your current uh, earnings are uh, health and life insurance contracts, a list of your monthly expenses, giving us an idea of, of your current lifestyle that you're, you're using at this point in time, and then how you might want to change that for the future, possibly if you're going to maintain that or, or relative lifestyle given cost of living changes, or if you're going to increase uh, the, the expenses maybe or decrease them in the future. Any other documents you think may be important to your financial planning process. So start saving. Once you have factored in the above considerations, it's necessary to determine how much you will need to save on your own. Then, then we got to put together the savings plan. The earlier we start saving, the better. So first consider the possible sources of income you will have during retirement. Note that as we're saving for retirement, we might first have the initial step of saying, do I need to pay down debt before I start saving? Uh, and so you might have the debt like a mortgage. And if you have the mortgage, then the question is, well, uh, the mortgage has some tax benefit for it. So you might still have you know, retirement savings that can outperform in terms of gains over the mortgage. But if you have a lot of credit card debt or something like that, then the question would be, should I pay off the debt before I start uh, to saving? The sooner we can get to basically a point of saving, the better, because we want to have as long a time horizon as possible to allow those savings to work for uh, on them on themselves, to build on themselves to save for a, a good uh, retirement nest egg. So a complete retirement income package is commonly referred to as a, quote, three-legged stool, end quote, comprising of Social Security, employer-sponsored retirement plans, such as qualified retirement plans, and your personal savings. So what are going to be the resources we have in retirement? When we're earning money, we're living on basically wages oftentimes. When we retire, hopefully we're not totally dependent on Social Security, but at the same time, hopefully it doesn't completely die and we have Social Security that's going to be coming to us since we've been paying into it all this time. And then the employer sponsored a retirement plan like a 401k that we we might be putting money into. That's going to be a hefty part of many people's savings. And then our personal savings over and above what we put into a retirement plan, for example. So, of course, the amount of personal savings you need to achieve depends on the contributions to retirement accounts by your employer and your projected income from Social Security. So, in other words, we might put if if we have a good like retirement plan with our employer we might be putting a whole lot of money into the retirement plan and they might be matching it and so on so we might have most of our retirement money in the retirement plan but if we're limited to that because we don't have it through the employer or or we're limited by an ira or something like that we might have personal savings that are outside the retirement plan which can be good because it would be nice in retirement from a tax strategy to be living on some money that's coming out of, of a retirement plan, which is going to be subject to tax, and maybe have some money that's in a Roth or, or is not subject to taxation as we are using it, because that might be a way to lower our taxes. So your next consideration is the type of saving vehicle you use for your personal savings. This will affect your required annual savings. So the amount varies depending on whether your means of savings are in pre-tax, after-tax, tax-free, or tax-deferred accounts, or a combination thereof. So as we start to save, what kind of vehicles are we using? Are we just putting it into the bank account? If that's the case, then uh, we're, we're probably not going to get as much a return on it. We can put them in mutual funds. Mutual funds have a return, but we have to still, we don't get the tax benefits. We can put them into tax deferred accounts like IRAs and 401k plans, which gives us that tax deferred basis 
Uh, so, so which can give us, of course, some benefits to grow. But then we got to think about the taxes we have to pay when we pull the money out of the retirement account. So the type of savings account you choose depends on, among other things, whether it is better for you to pay tax on your savings before or after retirement. So the general idea, the modern or most people think that in my earning years, I'm going to earn more income and therefore I'm going to try and that'll put me in a higher tax bracket. Therefore, if I get access to a 401k plan or something like that, I'm going to try to max out the 401k plan to lower my income in my earning years. I also, by putting money into a 401k plan, might have access to matching from the employer, which could be a benefit as well. And then when I pull the money out, I will, I'll pay taxes. But you could be in a situation where you might say, hey, taxes, what if taxes are way higher when I retire or I'm going to be pulling a lot more money out and my cost of living will actually be higher in retirement? In that case, you might say, hey, I'd rather pay the taxes now, maybe put money into a Roth IRA or something like that. And then when I pull the money out, it will not be taxed. But traditionally, most people will put, try to put money maxing out the, the 401k plan if they have access to it because you have that a uh, huge tax benefit so tax benefits retirement accounts so saving in a tax deferred vehicle such as a traditional ira or 401k plan may reduce your current taxable income if you have a 401k your taxable income is reduced by what income you defer to the plan and if you have a traditional ira you may be able to claim your contributions as a tax deduction so we talked a little bit more about these in in prior sections but you know the general idea is that of course you're putting money into the 401k plan so that you use that to target saving for retirement and then when you pull the money out you got to remember that you might have a ta you can have a tax uh, event at the point in time you take it out because it's a deferral type of a strategy earnings uh, in such vehicles also occur on a tax deferred basis but the assets are taxed when you distribute or withdraw them from the retirement account you may uh, you may pay less in income taxes on amounts saved on a pre-tax basis if you make withdrawals during retirement and your income tax rate is lower than it is in your pre-retirement years. By using post-tax funds to save for retirement, you won't have to pay taxes again when you withdraw them during retirement. However, uh, your earnings on post-tax funds are usually not tax deferred. So when you withdraw these amounts, they may be taxed at ordinary income tax rate or capital gains rate, depending on the type of income and the duration for which you held the investment. You could, you, you could also use a Roth IRA, for example, but I won't get into that in detail here. So uh, if you are eligible for Roth IRA, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more, uh, you may want to ask uh, your financial planner whether it is beneficial for you to use one even for only part of your savings. So the, the Roth IRA is kind of like, again, the reverse tax benefit component to a traditional IRA. So you pay the tax, you don't get the tax benefit when you put the money in, but you get that deferral that the gains aren't taxed. And then, you know, when you take the money out, you don't have to pay the taxes on it when you take the money out. So most of the time, most people have access to like a 401k plan, a traditional 401k plan. So that's the one they're usually going to be using. But if you have the capacity to put some money into a Roth, it could be a good strategic thing to do for a couple reasons. One, when you're putting money into the Roth, you might be at a point where your income tax is fairly low right now, which means you'd rather pay the tax now rather than in retirement. And two, it'd be nice to have some money in a Roth or something other than a retirement account, which will not be subject to tax when you take it out in retirement because you'd like to have your income be lower that you're living on because of the progressive tax system. So if you can have only a portion of your tax that you're living on be taxable, then you'll be paying less taxes generally in retirement than generally. So Roth IRAs are funded with after-tax assets. Earnings accrue on a tax-deferred basis and distributions are tax-free if you meet certain requirements. So according to Christy Sullivan, who's a CFP, Certified Financial Planner, 
Uh, there are two reasons it is important to have after-tax investments as part of your retirement plan. First, if you do such a great job saving that you earn retire before age 59 and a half, you need money you can access without a 10% early withdrawal penalty. So in other words, when you put money into a general kind of retirement account, then you, you, you have to wait until after you clear the age that you could take it out without being penalized. And if you retire earlier than that, then you'd like to have some of your money that you can live on that you don't have to take out of your retirement account before you hit the age in which you're not going to be penalized on it. So that could be a benefit. Second, it's nice to have some diversification of your tax bill in retirement so that every account withdrawal doesn't get taxed at regular income tax rates. And again, that's what I'm kind of talking about when I'm saying, like, if you if you if you're gonna live on a hundred thousand dollars and you have to pull that whole hundred thousand dollars out of an account that's taxed when you withdraw it out of the account, you're paying taxes on a hundred thousand dollars, which is a per, fairly high income. If you can pull out only, you know, forty thousand or like sixty thousand out of the account that's going to be taxed, and you pull out the other forty thousand out of another account that's not ta subject to tax well now you're only taxed at on the 60,000 which which means you're going to be in a lower tax bracket if you can set something like that up typically because it's a progressive tax system so contribution limits for retirement accounts the initial the internal revenue service IRS that is has established limits as to how much can be contributed to an IRA each year. The contribution limit to a traditional and Roth is $6,000 per year for 2021-2022. Individuals age 50 and over can deposit a catch-up contribution in the amount of $1,000 each year. Now notice this gets a little bit confusing because if you have, it's a little bit more complicated because if you have access to like a retirement plan, like a, like a 401k plan through your work, then uh, that that can impact basically these limits. If you don't have any ability to put money into a 401k plan, then these are the limits and there could be some overlap depending on your income level if you do have access to a 401k plan. If you have access to a 401k plan, you typically want to try to max that out to the point that you can, to the point that you have the cash flow to do it and to the and or to the point of the dollar limitation, which is much higher. So the contribution limit for employees enrolled in a 401k plan uh, in 2021 is $19,500, rising to $20,500 in 2022. So that's obviously a lot of money for most people to be able to put in in a year. But if you can put in as much as you could, uh, as you're able to afford, you need the cash flow clearly to do that then that's usually one of the biggest kind of benefits uh, that you can have for deferrals. So those who are age 50 and older can contribute a catch-up contribution of 6,500 for both 2021 and 2022. Find extra money. That's what I'd like to do, find some extra money. It's nice thing to figure out how much you need during retirement, how much you need to save, and what account you will use to do so. But the primary challenge is finding the extra funds to put towards savings, especially if your budget is already spread thin. For many, this means changing uh, spending habits, rebudgeting, and redefining needs versus wants. So for most people, it's difficult to get the cash flow to put into the savings. And to do so, that means changing habits and, and think about priorities in terms of where you want to put your money. Quote, separating your personal budget between discretionary and non-discretionary spending helps create a baseline in terms of what you need versus what you want, says Mark Hebner, founder and president, Index Fund Investors. So uh, the 12 step recovery program for active investors. So quote, seeing the life you want to live in detail, end quote, Hebner adds, can incentivize you to save more in order to live that life, end quote. So you might wanna to try to break out in terms of your spending habits. What are the things you need? What are the things that you don't, aren't necessities? and then try to think about how important and prioritizing your savings are, what's the lifestyle you want into the saving years, and then prioritize your spending needs accordingly. So invest. Once you are able to allocate a part of your monthly income to your savings, you need to think about investing those amounts. So once we have the cash flow to invest, then the question is, how are we gonna do our investing? 
Investing puts your money to work for you and usually gives you the benefits of compound interest. So that means that investing over a longer term means that you're earning money on the money. And so that's why that long time horizon is what we really want. We want to start investing as soon as possible so we get the maximum impact of that compounding process. Investing uh, is integral to ensure your retirement program meets your goals. And the earlier you start, the easier it will be for you to do so. So that compounding really has a long impact and we'd like to be and get as much of advantage from it as we can. Craig Ezrelson, PhD, the designer of the 12 portfolio in Springville explains, I suspect that many overthink the process of saving for retirement. Let me suggest three simple guidelines that can be started today by anyone. First, start setting aside some money each month. A good goal is 10% of your monthly income. It may take years to achieve that goal, but any amount of savings is better than none. So the idea being take action sooner rather than later. Try to set up your account. Try to start setting up the habit of putting money into your savings. He adds, second, autom automate your saving and investing. That way it happens without you having to remember. And the minimum needed to open a mutual fund is often lower if you automate your investments. So in other words, it'd be great if you can just take some money out of your paycheck from paycheck to paycheck and put it into the investment uh, automatically. That way uh, you don't have to agonize over the process. And that's usually a fairly good strategy for your investing because you might have to say, well, I want to invest when the market is low and so on and so forth. But if you if you overthink when you're putting money into the market, then you, you, you might end up in a situation where you're just holding on to the money. And when you have a long time horizon that you're investing over, it's often a fairly good strategy to invest just periodically, just in general, because over the long run, we would expect things to go up. And that way you're going to be investing sometimes when there's peaks and sometimes when there's troughs. But in the long term, it should be a fairly uh, decent strategy. And it's an automatic kind of strategy so that you're not seeing the money and agonizing over the decision process. So a third, don't overmanage your investments. When some of your mutual funds are not performing well, be patient and invest more. And this is part of the agony of these long-term goals. When we're trying to, these long-term time horizon goals as individual, just people, we're usually not good at those kind of plans. So we often look at the short term and, and we make decisions that are costing us basically in the long run. And so if you just automate the process that eliminates that for most investors that don't have the time to follow very closely, you know, the, the ups and downs on the short term of the market. So you're going to just keep the investments in there and let them ride. If you look at them all the time and you and you react out of fear, you're usually going to take the money out at the worst times, right? At the bottom, at the troughs, and then put the money in at the peaks. And that's exactly backwards. You're actually often better off to just put money in periodically. Buying low, being con consistent, and ex exercising patience are the hallmarks of successful long-term investors. The types of investments that are suitable for your portfolio will depend primarily on your risk tolerance. So when you're thinking about how you're going to invest, as we've looked at in prior sections, questions being are how long do you have, what's your time horizon, what's an appropriate mix with your time horizon, and then your risk tolerance level. Generally, the closer you are to your targeted retirement date, the lower your risk tolerance will be. The idea is that those who have a longer time until retirement have more opportunity to recoup any losses that may occur on investments. People in their early 20s may have a portfolio that includes more high risk investments such as stocks. So clearly, if we have a longer time horizon, we might want more, a little bit more leaning to the risky side of things, which would be stocks as opposed to bonds, possibly stocks that aren't the largest cap stocks, for example. And that's because we can take on the risk early, having that longer time horizon. Hopefully they play out to the plus side for us, given that longer time horizon. People in their 60s, on the other hand, will have a higher concentration of investments with guaranteed rates of return, such as certificates of deposits or government securities. That's in part because we don't want to take on the risk when we're at the goal of retirement, because if there is a downturn in the market, 
we don't have the time to bounce back, number one. And number two, we want to be living off oftentimes, if we're in retirement, the income from the investments. That would be dividends and interest, for example. To live off of those things, we have to have our money in the types of investments that provide that kind of income. Regardless of risk tolerance, it is important to achieve an appropriate diversified portfolio, one that maximizes returns for its determined risk. Finally, if you do not already have a competent financial planner or you are looking for one, be sure to shop around and check the background of anyone you plan to interview. Bottom line, this article discusses some of the fundamental groundwork for ensuring your retirement program is successful, but this is only an overview. The underlying details will take time and effort for you to determine and execute the steps uh, outlined above do not make up a catch-all solution. Your financial planner should be able to help ensure that all of the important factors are considered. In the meantime, don't be afraid to conduct uh, some research on your own by visiting websites such as the U.S. Social Security Administration, which provides useful information and calculators for retirement planning.